Welcome to the third tutorial on depreciation. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about the diminishing balance method for calculating depreciation. The diminishing balance method assumes that the rate of the depreciation should be constant or fixed throughout the time or during the estimated useful life of the asset. Under this diminishing balance method, a fixed rate of depreciation is applied on the reduced balance of asset. Reduced balance indicates the written down value of the asset or vogue value of the asset and we can calculate the written down value or vogue value by deducting the residual value from the acquisition cost of the asset. However, since a constant percentage rate is applied to the written down value, gradually the amount of depreciation decrease year after year but the rate of depreciation is fixed throughout the estimated useful life. Though the percentage at which the depreciation is charged remains fixed but the amount of depreciation goes on diminishing year after year. That's why the method is called diminishing balance method because the fixed rate is applied to the written down below that reduces year after year that means that diminishes year after year that's why the method is called diminishing balance method the diminishing balance method assumes that an asset should be depreciated more in the earlier years because it is assumed that the maximum loss of an asset occurs in the early years of use. The fixed percentage rate that is applied to allocate the cost of depreciation can be obtained by applying the formula. That means the rate of depreciation can be calculated by this formula. The formula is R equal to 1 minus and root over S divided by C. Here 1 is the part of the formula then minus then here n is indicating the number of useful life or estimated useful life or expected useful life in years of the asset and s is indicating the scrap value of the asset scrap value is also known as salvage value or residual value and c is indicating the cost of the asset or acquisition cost of the asset there is an important note for you this formula or this method can only be applied whenever the asset has a scrap value because in the formula one part is s s is indicating the scrap value so if there is any asset which has no any scrap value then this method is not applicable. That's why any asset which has a scrap value or residual value on that asset, we can apply the diminishing balance method or we can apply this rate of depreciation to calculate the amount of depreciation. For easy understanding, we can see there is a example. You can see, suppose a cost of a machine is stuck at 10,000 and the scrap value of the asset is 2000 after 4 years here 10000 is the acquisition cost and 2000 is the scrap value or salvage value or residual value and 4 years is indicating the estimated useful life so if we apply the formula we can see r r is indicating the rate of depreciation under diminishing valence method so here 4 is indicating the number of estimated useful life as that is scrap value and c or cost of acquisition so after solving this formula 
we can see the rate of depreciation is 33.33 percent this is the rate of depreciation that should be applied on the retained down value of the asset retained down value is decreasing or diminishing year after year that's why the method is known as diminishing balance method so for easy understanding i am going to explain this table in the initial stage the rate of depreciation should be applied on the cost price or acquisition cost and for the second year and the subsequent year the depreciation is computed by multiplying the rate of depreciation on the retained down value you can see in the first year the retained down value is 6667 in the second year the retained down value is 4445 and the third year we can see the retained down value is 2963 year after year the retained down value is decreasing or diminishing that's why the method is known as diminishing valence method however no further depreciation would be charged when the retained down value is equal to the sell base value here we can see the sell base value or scrap value is 2000 and the retained down value is here 2000 that's why after this year we will not apply the rate of depreciation to calculate the amount of depreciation but there may be a small amount of difference between the estimated and resulting residual value here we can see the difference is 25 after the calculation we can see the amount of depreciation is 988 but since we need to maintain the scrap value up to 2000 that's why here the written down value is 2963 so difference is 963 although from the calculation the amount of depreciation is showing 9 double eight, but we are writing it 963 because written down value should be equal to the residual value or scrap value at the end of the estimated useful life we can see in the first year we have applied the rate of depreciation on the cost price the depreciation is 3333 and accumulated depreciation is 3333 accumulated means the total depreciation so since this is the first year that's why this is equal to the null depreciation and written down value is calculated by deducting the accumulated depreciation from the cost price here if we deduct the 3333 from the 10,000 so the balance is 6667 that is called written down value and the most important aspect in this diminishing balance method is that you have to apply the rate on the written down value so in the second year the written down value is 6667 that is shown here and after applying the rate of depreciation the amount of depreciation in the second year is 2222 and the accumulated depreciation we can see here 3333 and here 2222 if we add this to amount the total accumulated depreciation is 5555 so already we have discussed that we can calculate the written down value by deducting the accumulated depreciation here the amount of accumulated depreciation is 5555 and by deducting this 5555 from the acquisition cost the written down value is 4445 and in the third year we have to apply the rate on this written down value that is 4445 after applying the rate of depreciation that is 33.33 percent and all depreciation for the third year is 1482 there may be a decimal point that is rounded for simplicity so the accumulated depreciation would be we have to add this annual depreciation in the third year with the previous depreciation that is 5555 and the accumulated depreciation for the third year is 
7037. So if we deduct this amount from the cost price, the return down value is 2963. And now we need to calculate the depreciation on this return down value. But after applying the rate, we can see the annual depreciation for the fourth year is 988. But since we are aware that the scrap value is 2000, that's why the difference is 963 that is shown as the annual depreciation. In the last year, the depreciation is adjusted to the amount of 25 to bring the carrying value of the asset to its estimated scrap value. That means the scrap value is 2000 and it is adjusted with the annual depreciation of 963. That is the balancing figure. That means in the last year, we don't need to calculate the rate of depreciation or we can apply the depreciation but it should be adjusted to ensure the scrap value of the asset. This is the formula for calculating the rate of depreciation and this is the process of applying the rate of depreciation. Only you have to consider that we apply the rate of depreciation on the return down value and we can see the return down value is decreasing year after year or diminishing year after year that's why the method is known as diminishing balance method now we are going to discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages of diminishing balance method we can see this method apply the rate of depreciation that is fixed that's why it gives a fair charge of depreciation no recalculation is necessary when additional assets are purchased in the straight line method whenever there is a new asset we have to recalculate the amount of depreciation but in this method no recalculation is necessary whenever there is any additional assets so this method is applicable for income tax purpose and the impact of obsolescence can be reduced if a significant part of the cost is written off in early life because in the diminishing balance method we show more depreciation in the early life of the asset that's why the impact of obsolescence can be avoided and there are some disadvantages this method lacks simplicity because obtaining the percentage or rate of depreciation is somewhat complex and this method cannot be applied for those assets which has a short life and the asset is never fully depreciated and this method does not follow one principle that is we should spread the cost throughout the economic life or should be spread according to use but under this diminishing balance method we are showing higher depreciation at the earlier stage of the estimated life of the asset that's why it's one kind of disadvantage but considering the tax purpose or considering the effect of obsolescence this method has advantages thank you